Before we get into today's video, first of all, thank each and every one of you guys for the 500K sub mark here at Tech Yes City. It's a big milestone for me personally, and thank each and every one of you guys for hitting that sub button and supporting us over the years. Though with that said, that's the positive news. Let's get into what is going to be the most awkward product review I have done up until this date. Because in my opinion, there's now external forces outside of the tech scene that's really messing up the prices. And that is, of course, I've spoken about this in the last few months, a thing known as inflation. And to break that down for you guys in a very simple manner, that is, is when there's so much money being created, especially out of thin air, that then devalues the currency that we use, which is dollars in Australia, it'd be Aussie dollars. In America, it's American dollars. And then in the UK, it'd be our Great British pounds. So when there's a massive creation of money, especially when it's backed by nothing, and it starts circulating into the economy, suddenly everyone has more money to buy products and the price of those products in nominal terms goes up. And I believe we're now starting to see this effect come out in front of our very eyes. And that is with the 1199 USD MSRP of the 3080 Ti, especially when we compare that to the $699 MSRP that we got with the 3080 last year. And in fact, these cards in terms of their size and also their weight and the cooler being used are almost identical in that they share the same footprint. I'll put the dimensions and also the weight of the 30 Ti up on the screen for you guys. But now back to the pricing, which we're gonna be talking about this before we get into the numbers. So if you guys wanna skip ahead to the gaming numbers, I'll put the chapter in the description below. But I feel like pricing and supply is a huge factor here, considering the little sibling, the RTX 3080, is actually coming back into stock here locally where I am, but it's pretty much double the MSRP of what it was when it's first released. Now, NVIDIA are directly trying to address the pricing issue themselves, and they're putting on the 3080 Ti what's known as a low hash rate limiter. And this is affecting the Dagahashi Moto mining algorithm if you wanna mine on a Ethereum miner, or if you want to mine with nice hash, then the rates of Ethereum on this card have dropped significantly versus that of even a 3080. However, the other algorithms are still available and they will mine at quite profitable levels. But as I've said in the past, I'll put a link to a video up here, the mining profitability of these other cards, if they were to get flooded, by the sheer hashing power from the Ethereum market, it would drop the profitability down significantly. So I think that's why Nvidia have really only bothered to target Ethereum mining with the release of their low hash rate limiter, which I'm also told is a hardware level solution. So the low hash rate limiter imposed by Nvidia will help curb the problem, but the problem will still exist regardless because miners will pretty much target anything as long as mining profitability is profitable. Now there's another group added in there, of course, that's the scalpers. As long as supply is low, scalpers will be doing everything they can to secure a card, especially close to that MSRP price, if they can get them from retailers who are trying their best to keep prices low, then they'll just go on eBay and resell them too. So now we know on these graphics cards, there's three different types of buyers. That is the gamer, the crypto miner, and the scalper. We can easily see that at current MSRP levels, there is not enough supply to meet that demand. So what this traditionally means would be either two things, and that is the buyer either gives up trying to buy one of these cards or there's supply to alleviate the problem. But then if we throw in the third problem that we spoke about before, and that is inflation, we can see that we're met with a third external force that no one seems to be talking about. Are these two and a half thousand dollar prices going to become a new norm? And that is really only something that the central bank themselves would know. But in the meantime, I am holding on to my little friend who will protect me against that third factor. You wanna play with? Well? Okay. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Though, let's get onto the 3080 Ti finally and talk about the performance, where this card will come very close to that of an RTX 3090. Looking at the 1080p gaming numbers, we can see here this card is nearly chart topping only slightly bested by that at the 3090. Moving through 1080p, the Nvidia and AMD cards do trade blows, but that 3080 Ti is coming out near the top. And then over to Call of Duty Cold War, this was more of a title for AMD at 1080p in terms of its relative price point versus the other price point of the cards, at least at MSRP. And then onto F1 2020, I decided to test this game 
at DX11 for Nvidia because they get more FPS and then DX12 for AMD where they get more FPS over DX11. Bit of a weird dilemma with this game, but the 3080 Ti yet again performs very close to that of a 3090. And then the last title we got up here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I'm sure at 1080p, there are some CPU limitations starting to come into play, especially at the highest graphical settings. Though under 1440p, we are at an in-between here, of course, in between 1080p and 4K. And you can start to see that the memory bandwidth on especially the 3080 Ti and the 3090 does start to uh, stretch its legs a little bit versus the AMD counterparts, as well as even something like the 3080, which is where this card does have the same bandwidth available as its big brother, the 3090. Also F1 2020, the performance is really solid, especially if you're playing at 144 hertz or 165 hertz, and you wanna leave the detail absolutely maxed. Though 4K is easily where the party is happening on the 3080 Ti. Now at the back of the card, you've got that HDMI 2.1. It's going to support full RGB, 444, 120 hertz, 4K with that extra bandwidth. And this is where this card really does shine. As well as the AMD counterparts, the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT, they do a great job at 4K 120 hertz too. Though going through these four titles, this is where the GDDR6X and the bandwidth on the 3080 Ti and the 3090 do start to pull ahead of the AMD counterparts and even that of the 3080. And what I'm gonna show you guys here with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider was I'm gonna include the overclocked numbers and the underclocked figures where the overclock numbers on this card were really impressive. If you're into dabbling into overclocking a little bit, especially if you get a water-cooled 3080 Ti, then you can really extract some really high uh, FPS. And in fact, it was comfortably beating the 3090 by a lot. And if we contrast that to the power consumption that you're going to use, we can see here that the undervolt is one to consider too if you like to save power, but you still wanna get really high FPS at 4K. And of course that overclock uses up a little bit more power, but it's definitely gonna give you some of the best FPS you can get, period, on PC gaming. Though we'll pull up some DLSS numbers here as well as ray trace numbers, where in Fortnite, if we look at the ray tracing, the 3080 Ti does struggle a little bit. If it was one test I could pull up that does start to show that perhaps the 12 gigabytes of VRAM is a limitation on the 3080 Ti versus the 3090, this would be the test where I did start to notice a little bit more choppiness versus the 3090. But if we then turn on DLSS, both at the 4K native and the 4K with ray tracing on, we can see here the performance boost, especially with the ray tracing on, is significant, and it does push it into the realm of a smooth experience, even with epic settings. And then moving on to uh, Call of Duty, this is with ray tracing on, you can get a smooth experience as well if you're happy playing at 4K 60. But if we're looking at 4K, uh, 120 hertz or 144 hertz having the dlss on balance gave us a really nice picture but gave us fluid fps at 4k so at the moment with ray tracing and dlss it does depend on the title for me personally i really liked dlss and ray tracing in cyberpunk 2077 i thought that was when the two came together but most of the time i will leave ray tracing off and i use dlss on the balanced or the quality profile at 4K to get that extra detail, but still get smooth FPS. Now, AMD have recently announced their FSR technology. We'll have to wait and see how that performs in relation to DLSS, but hopefully AMD can get that out soon because at the moment when you turn the DLSS on, it does give Nvidia a massive advantage at 4K. So now that we are done with the performance figures, it's time for a few critiquing points on the graphics card itself. Now. The weight of the card is coming over 1300 grams, but I feel like a card of a flagship of this nature, you would want a bigger cooler, uh, where I thought the 3080 was just cutting it, but since this does use up a bit more power, the noise, and I'll pull up the noise and temps, the temperatures were getting a little bit high here, going into 74 degrees, and the noise was quite noticeable at 43 decibels. So if you're paying a premium for a card like the 3080 Ti, I would like to see something in between the 3080 and the 3090 in terms of cooling and the size of that cooler that's adopted because the 3090's cooling performance as well as the sheer size, that thing worked extremely well. It was one of the best coolers I've seen on a graphics card, period. And then the 3080 was okay. But however, this does use up a little bit more power and the 290 mil fans, even though the design does work as proof with the 3090 versus some other really big 3090 cards, the 3080 does, I feel, need a bit more metal 
as witnessed with the 100 fan speed versus 80% fan speed, as we can see a big drop there. And basically, if that drop from 80% versus 100% fan speeds isn't as big as it is here, then that means the cooler doesn't need the faster fan speeds, which basically means there's enough metal on board to do the job. Also included in the 3080 Ti Founders is the 12 pin to two eight pin connectors, and that's located in the middle of the card and it goes on as such, but it does block out your side profile a little bit. If you were to try and mount the 3080 Ti, I would suggest vertically mounting it and that would look the best. Where the inside of the card has some slight LED glow as well as a GeForce logo lighting up with a glow of its own. The ultimately the Founders card, it does provide the FPS and now it is time to give you guys a conclusion and my thoughts on this card right here. And if we're looking at the 1199 MSRP, you're gonna see that versus the 3080, the 3080 at its 699 MSRP was a much better buy. And so the 3080 Ti, it leaves it in that field of, well, we've just now got to look at street pricing because I feel like Nvidia have just said, okay, 1199 is what you can expect it to come in from, but we've got no idea when it will come in from that. And I believe with the 1199 USD price point, we all know the card is going to come in much higher than that and the market is going to pretty much price this thing at possibly around 2,000 USD. And in Australia, I'm predicting it to come in stock around two and a half thousand Aussie dollars. And that's just being realistic based on what I'm seeing, especially in relation to the pricing of the RTX 3080. Now, industry insiders say with the amount of current demand that basically you can expect this to go on even another year if the supply isn't increased to match the massive amount of demand. But I'm predicting prices could go even higher if the money printing continues. And as long as these massive $6 trillion stimulus bills are announced and interest rates stay near zero, we're all going to be feeling the pain of higher prices. And I'm starting to witness this from anything from my local bakery to things like bananas and gasoline prices here locally, everything is going up. And the graphics card going up as well is just another side effect of that. So what can one then do in this environment? And the answer to that would probably, what I'm doing anyway, if you wanna save, that is save in something other than dollars. And uh, that's what I've been doing recently. And actually in the last four months, I've been educating myself heavily on the topic because as a person who likes to save rather than borrow, I have been uh, caught out in a weird predicament during this whole inflationary cycle that I feel is coming and is being especially underreported by uh, news outlets. Anyway, before I get on out of here, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. This card right here, the pricing is just gonna be completely messed up. But if you can get one, and I'd say if you can get one closer to that MSRP and you can afford it and that's what you really want, then I would go for it because who knows when all this madness will end. I have no idea, I don't have a crystal ball. And again, I think the only people that can give you that answer are the central banks. Hope you've enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you've got any questions or comments about today's review, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. But with that said, we do have here the question of the day, which comes from Jordan Stride. And they ask, hey mate, how do you find these PCs so cheap? I'm in Brisbane and can't find any deals. And answer this one directly, if you see a good deal, especially in the current climate we're in in 2021, then you have to be quicker than you've ever been before. So when I see a good deal, I pretty much sweep it up as quick as I can. And speaking of sweeping up a deal, do you guys think if this card was priced at say 1500 Aussie dollars or 1200 USD, would you sweep it up at that price point versus what it realistically is going to go onto the market for. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. Once again, thank you guys so much for half a million subscribers. It means a lot to me and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.